Hi, and welcome to Transform Your Skin with Advanced Skin Care. Now, if you didn't join our class that we had at the beginning of the year, this was hosted by our spa supervisor, who is also a medical esthetician. Her name is Jane Brock. I am Laura LaRusso, the director of the Wellness Center. I'll be taking you through the slides today as a licensed esthetician. I've been in the industry for over 25 years, and uh, Jane and I put this together just to talk a little bit about some advanced skincare that you could be doing at home, some things to consider when getting a facial, and why we get facials in the first place. So we're going to take you through the slides here, and this way you can join in on the class if you missed us at the beginning of the year. Topics to be discussed in the webinar today is why is getting a facial important? A lot of people know when they want to get a massage, they know when they need that little um, treatment for their back or their legs or their feet, but when it comes to getting a facial, you know, why is getting a facial important? If you are getting facials, how do you prolong the effects of a facial at home? Usually after a facial, your skin is glowing, it's nice, it's bright, it's tight. Um, how do you take that and mimic that same effect at home? What are some skin types? A lot of people out there still don't necessarily know what kind of skin type they have, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some at-home basics for skincare, some advanced at-home skincare, and then what types of advanced facial modalities are out there. And um, we opened up a panel at the end of our lecture back in January to see what type of skincare services you would like the vineyards to offer. So I'm gonna open this up to you. You can leave me your comments below if you're watching this and feel free to let us know. We were getting ready to launch quite a few things before we had to closed down. So we have some things in the works, but we always love to hear back from our members. Okay, so what is cellular turnover? Cellular turnover describes the process of shedding dead skin cells and their replacement with fresh, new, younger, and healthier cells. So basically how quickly or slowly this process occurs with you personally has everything to do with age. It has a lot to do with your environment and how much UV exposure you've had perhaps some hormones that you have going on, some foods that you're eating, and whether or not you smoke. So there's a lot of factors that are related to how quickly you turn over skin cells, age being the biggest factor. So when we are young and we are, say, in our teens to 20s, we're turning over skin cells um, between 21 and 30 days. So that leads to a nice plump um, face. I always used to compare collagen to a nice thick mattress that your skin is laying on top of. Um, so in this case, you have this beautiful thick plump mattress. Um, you have skin that regenerates quickly. You tend to heal from scars quickly. You tend to heal, heal from breakouts quickly. And that is all in part because your cellular turnover is going so fast. When you get up between your 30s and 40s, sometimes you're looking up to about 45 days to turn over a single skin cell. So you might notice that some things start to become a little more apparent, like some lines and wrinkles, maybe some hyperpigmentation or sun damage from the past, maybe some scars from the past. You might notice that things are a little slower to heal, and that's because your cellular turnover is slowing down. When you get to your 50s and beyond, you're looking at anywhere from 45 to 60 to even 75 days to turn over a skin cell. This is when we really start to see the signs and the effects of aging. You start to notice that your lines and wrinkles are deeper and more apparent, that your hyperpigmentation is more apparent. Um, this is key to understanding the, the reason why we get facials is to help turn over skin cells. So when you leave your esthetician and your skin looks amazing and for a couple days after, your skin's really glowing and it really appears to be um, quite uh, magnificent, then it is because we've helped trick the skin into cycling through a turnover um, without it even knowing. So immediately after having a facial, your skin looks and feels amazing. It is recommended to have a facial treatment monthly in order to reap the benefits of a, of a professional deep cleaning exfoliation. So a lot of people do ask, how often should I get a facial? It should be once a month. If you're not trying to hit something very specific and get an advanced modality like chemical peel uh, series or microdermabrasion series, then you really should just come in for monthly maintenance. It's gonna help boost that cellular turnover and it's gonna start to um, create a little more action in the skin. 
So even if you're getting facials a few times a year, you'll still see some nice results with proper home care, but again, that once a month is optimum. Um, and then here are some tips that you could do after a facial to keep your skin refreshed. So when you get a facial, they say to skip the coverage, especially after, I'd say, the day that you've had a facial, you want to try to not wear makeup. So when we're in a facial, we help to clean the pores, we help to purge any oil, or and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be your own oil. It can be the oil from your products, from your sunscreen, from your moisturizer, from your makeup, that we help get all of that out of the pores. So when you go right back into wearing makeup again, here's your nice, beautiful, squeaky clean pores. It's just putting all of that right back in there. Um, they also say take a little break from cardio. No post-facial gym appointments. So if you've just had a facial, the worst thing you could do is go sit in a sauna, sit in a steam room, sit in a hot shower, or go run on the treadmill, walk outside in the heat. You want to try to let those pores close up naturally and leave the products on your skin that we put on in the facial room. We don't want you to go sweat them off. You just paid a lot of money to have beautiful products. And uh, I have seen it quite a few times, people go jump in the shower and it defeats the purpose. Leave those beautiful products on your skin. Another thing they say after a facial that they want you to do is to drink plenty of water. So we've gone through a nice little drainage in your massage. You know, we've purged the skin. They say to continue that detoxing by drinking up some water. It does help plump up the skin. Um, try to stay away from foods directly after a facial that contain maybe caffeine, alcohol, or foods high in sugar and salt. Just Those just counteract the hydration benefits that you get from a facial. So directly after a facial, drink lots of water and eat a little healthier than you normally would. Sunscreen is essential on a daily basis, but especially after a facial, we've just tricked your skin into turning over a cellular layer, which means that we have exfoliated your skin which means that you are a lot more photosensitive than you would normally be. We've basically just stripped off your protective layers, so sunscreen is a must. And then if you are someone who breaks out after a facial, don't pick your breakouts. And it doesn't matter what age you are, you could be 65, you could be 25. Sometimes people after a facial have a little breakout, it's because it's maybe something that would have been working under the surface and come out eventually. Um, or maybe your skin isn't used to that cellular turnover process. Maybe it has a little bit of a um, reaction to the product. It's totally normal. Um, but if you get them, do not pick them. Now, getting into skin types, it's amazing to me how many people don't know what skin type they are, and that's okay. It just helps direct your product choices. It's, it's okay if you're you know, unaware of your, your skin type just kind of helps us a little more. And your esthetician will know what kind of skin type you are and will probably know, I mean, if you're a woman in your 60s, if you come in and say that you have oily skin, chances are you might not have oily skin, you might have dried out, maybe you had oily skin when you were younger, but your products that you're using are making your skin oily. So we will be able to tell that in the facial and help educate you and guide you toward products that are better for your specific skin type. So a skin type is a product of your genetics, um, definitely of your lifestyle and your environment. And how that can happen is that, say you live in Ohio and your skin has always been very dry. Um, if you move to Florida where it's a little more humid out, <laughs> a little more humid, um, quite a bit more humid, then all of a sudden you notice Maybe you're breaking out a little bit, maybe your skin's a little oilier, the makeup that you use or the moisturizer that you used up north just feel really heavy on your skin. Well, that is your environment coming into play. So yes, your environment has a lot to do with the skin type you have. Also water, if you are you know, washing your face with really hard water or soft water, sometimes that can really affect how your skin behaves. So if you have normal skin, and in my experience, there are a lot of people who don't necessarily know what skin type they have, and it's because they have normal skin. So they don't have any issues with their skin. They don't experience excessive amounts of oil. They don't experience excessive dryness. So therefore, they don't really know what kind of skin they have because they're not really experiencing any extremes. And that's one of the biggest triggers to me when someone says, I don't know what skin type I have. It, they're usually normal. If someone's oily or dry, they know it. If someone's sensitive, 
they know it. So if you don't know, you probably just have normal skin. Dry skin is um, pretty common when we start to mature. You don't have to be mature to have dry skin. Again, genetics, lifestyle, environment all come into play. But when you have dry skin, you might feel a little rough texture to the skin. Um, you might notice that it gets a little red or irritated from time to time. You might notice that um, you can't seem to put on enough moisturizer. You might notice that your skin kind of gets a little crepey or sometimes it flakes a little bit. That is all normal for having dry skin. And dry skin means that you are lacking sebaceous activity. So your sebaceous glands, which produce sebum, or what we call oil, um, just don't create as much sebum as other people. And that's okay. It just means that we have to add that oil and add that lipid barrier to your skin with your at-home products. Dry skin is probably the most wrinkled skin because if you think about running an engine without oil, it eventually seizes. <laughs> um, if you do not have that sebaceous activity that's constantly hydrating and lubricating the skin as it moves and twists and turns and does its skin things, then sometimes you'll notice cracks and breaks and pops and things like this. Those are um, because you do not have that lubrication from having sebaceous activity. So a lot of the times when you have drier skin, you have to work a little harder on those anti-aging products because you might start to see the signs of aging a little faster than somebody with oily skin who's very lubricated with sebaceous, with sebaceous activity. Oily skin is just the opposite, where we have a genetic predisposition to create a surplus of oil. And most people with oily skin know exactly what kind of skin type they have because oily skin to them is very troublesome. You could put on your makeup and about two hours later, it looks like you've got an oil slick on your cheeks or your forehead. And it's a little embarrassing. A lot of people with oily skin use blotting pads and that's fine. Um, you tend to have oily skin um, when you have kind of that thicker skin. So sometimes if you have Mediterranean uh, descent, if you have um, any kind of uh, darker Fitzpatrick scale skin, most of the time you're a little oily. Um, oily skin, I have to say, because of that sebaceous activity, we tend to not age uh, or the signs of aging aren't as apparent as with dry skin. Certainly are products out there that help to boost anti-aging because oily skin people, uh, I, I include myself in this, um, we do still age. We just don't do it as apparently or as quickly. So there are products out there nowadays that, are, that we're finding um, are in, in need. So manufacturers are finally producing products for anti-aging for people with oily skin. Before it was very hard to find. Mature skin. So as you age, you lose and slow down on that cellular turnover. Because of this, your skin gets a little thinner. We talked before about how uh, lines and wrinkles become more apparent, hyperpigmentation becomes more apparent, your skin becomes a little more translucent as you can kind of see through it, that thick mattress is kind of um, thinning out a little bit and your skin tends to dry up. Anytime I see a woman of maturity who comes in and is having breakouts and is having oily skin, sometimes they do. Um, it is oftentimes because of the products you're putting on your skin. Because you are mature and because your skin is, you know, you're looking for those anti-aging benefits, you tend to choose products that have a higher oil content. And depending on if you get them over the counter or you get them from an esthetician, Sometimes those oils are harder for your skin to um, take in. Some of them just sit right on top of the skin. And so, yes, then your skin feels oily. And because you've got this oil barrier on your skin, then yes, sometimes you do break out from it. Usually they're not breakouts. Usually they're called milia. <clears throat> and these are um, basically little white, um, they're basically cysts, but they are little white papules right under the surface of the skin. They look like little whiteheads that you could just take right out and they're not, they're stuck under there because they're a mix of dead dry skin and then that, that really thick oil that you've been slathering on because you want the anti-aging benefits. So mature skin, we need to exfoliate properly, not harshly, and we need to be putting on the right kind of moisturizer so that there is not a thick 
um, layer of mineral oil or excessive oil on the skin, but just enough for the skin to absorb and um, also for the anti-aging products to get down to the layers they need to get down to. Sensitive skin is the last skin type that we've included in this, and really it's more of a condition of the skin, but a lot of people feel like they have sensitive skin. All this means is that your skin might be a little more reactive than others. Um, sensitive skin can have a condition called rosacea, or it can just be a little sensitive to products, a little sensitive to the cold and the heat. Um, sometimes sensitive skin is a product of excessively dry skin. Sometimes it's a product of what you're using at home. So someone with oily skin who might be experiencing acne might be really, really doing deep exfoliations and using benzoyl peroxide and using these um, products that are really quite harsh. And then they start to see some sensitivity um, and then they might explain themselves as having sensitive skin. So sensitive skin is really a condition of the skin. We like to find the reason for sensitive skin. There usually is one and it's easier to treat once we find that. So it could be a type, but most of the time it's a condition of the skin. So your basic at-home skincare routine needs to go a little something like this. Now everybody has their own method, um, but if you are looking for the best reaction from your skin, this is what they recommend. So first and foremost, do you need a cleanser? Absolutely. You need to wash off the dirt, makeup, excess oil, dead skin cells, and then any environmental impurities that end up on your face throughout the day. I used to tell my students that your face is like a giant catcher's mitt and you are just walking around this world and you're catching pollen, you're catching uh, <laughs> uh, any kind of pollutant or environmental thing, you know, they're cutting the grass and you walk right through it. Um, where do you think all that stuff lands? It lands on our skin and your face is part of that. Also, you know, we eat, we put makeup on, we touch our face. You think about how many door handles you touch and how many pencils you touch and how many times you grab your car keys out of your purse that you've thrown old tissues in and then you touch your face. You know, your face collects a lot of gunk. So at the very least, you should absolutely be using a facial cleanser at night. And I emphasize facial cleanser. There are bars of soap, <laughs> there are, there's body soap, and then there's facial cleanser, a cleanser specifically made for the pH of your face. That is exactly what you need. Now in the morning, after you've rolled your face around on a pillow that's had your hair on it, you absolutely should cleanse your face. Sometimes I've got my clients on a cleanser specifically in the morning that's a little more gentle, and then one at night that's a little more deep cleaning. That's definitely a thing. Um, but you should, if you don't want to wash it in the morning, you should at least give it a nice cold rinse. So if you're looking at our naturopathica products and you're looking into something to purchase, we have a couple cleansers that are really nice. The naturopathica aloe cleansing gel is a foaming aloe gel cleanser. This is fantastic for a deeper cleanse in the evening and it has aloe vera in it as its main component so it's super hydrating and it's not going to strip the skin. The Manuka Honey Cleansing Balm is also a good one. This literally is a balm of Manuka Honey. It removes eye makeup, lip makeup, face makeup, and it leaves your skin really naturally hydrated. Um, we all probably by now know Manuka Honey has some really great benefits to fortifying the skin and the body and the, and the gut and it's also antimicrobial, so that's really nice. Then we have a chamomile cleansing milk as well, which is a thick milk that helps to break up different um, blockages on the skin, like makeup and dirt and debris. It's a little more gentle, and it's um, to me, it almost needs to be used with a little um, cloth, little facial cloth or a brush, um, because it doesn't have any of that kind of scrubbing benefit. It's a little harder to get the, the cleanser off, but it's specifically made for more sensitive skin types. So those are our three cleansers for naturopathica. Now we're getting into the launch of hydropeptides, so once we get the rep down to do some education, we'll do a little class on what are the best cleansers from hydropeptide as well. I want to also say that your cleanser will make up 
or how your skin behaves during the day. So if you wash your face with a very alkaline cleanser, and if you think of alkaline cleansers as the ones that foam up, alkaline uh, comes from the detergents in the cleanser, the foaming agents in the cleanser. So if you think of a tray of lasagna that say you made for your family, and um, you guys have dinner and you play a board game and then you come back to the dishes at night to do them and there's all this thick crusty stuff on the outside of the pan that you can't get off. What do you do? You put some warm water in there and you put a little squirt of Dawn dish soap, which is uh, very alkaline, almost as alkaline. Actually, it's a little more alkaline than facial cleanser. Um, and you let that set overnight. And the next day you go back to wash your dishes and voila, you can very easily dump the water out and a lot of the blockages come off and then you can take your sponge and you can wipe around and all of a sudden you have a nice clean pan. Well, alkaline cleansers do the same thing for your skin. So anything that foams or has those detergents, just like your, your hand cleanser and your dishwash, your dish soap, um, it's gonna do the same thing where it's gonna basically soften whatever is on your skin to death until it just kind of peels right off. If you're not using the correct toner with a cleanser that's very alkaline, guess what? You're gonna leave your skin very alkaline, which means it's gonna get basically really dry and um, it can leave your skin open for any kind of uh, germies to kind of get in there. Um, sometimes I see this a lot with uh, acne clients where you know they, they break out because they've used a very alkaline cleanser. I've seen people use you know Dove soap and have very dry skin because it's leaving their skin incredibly alkaline. Um, there's lots of detergents and everything we use that's meant to cleanse. So your, clean, your cleanser for your face should not necessarily foam uh, as much as you feel like it needs to. So we'll kind of get into that a little later, but your cleanser is really gonna make up for the health of your skin throughout the day. The next step is a moisturizer. And I do have a lot of clients that um, really, they just want two products. What two products should they have to be using? They don't wanna do 15 steps. And I always tell them a cleanser and a moisturizer, are the most important things. So your moisturizer is gonna help keep a protective barrier functioning properly on your skin. Whether you're oily, whether you're dry, whether you have mature skin, whether you're sensitive skin, um, you need this soft protective barrier of lipids on your skin. It helps for a number of reasons. So it's gonna help to either control oil if you are an oily skin person. It's gonna help to create or keep a little more oil on the skin if you have dry skin um, and also sensitive skin. And it helps with a transepidermal water loss that happens throughout the day and at night, which means that as we're kind of doing our thing, whether we're sleeping or we're walking around, the water and the hydration in our skin eventually begins to evaporate. So if you have a moisturizer on and you have that protective lipid barrier that's just kind of on the surface of the skin, you're slowing down and or stopping the process of a transepidermal water loss because you've got that barrier to seal it all in. So a couple of really nice moisturizers. We have um, the Calendula Essential Hydrating Cream is really nice. We have the Kula White Tea Moisturizer, which is really nice. And of course, with hydropeptide, we're gonna have some more moisturizers for you to use. Um, the sunscreen is incredibly important as well. And I would recommend that you find a moisturizer that has a sunscreen in it. So you only have one step to do. Some people don't want to, some people have a specific targeted treatment moisturizer and that's perfectly all right. Like that Calendula Essential Hydrating Cream, wonderful, beautiful, nice, thick um, moisturizer but you're missing the sunscreen. So usually what I'll say is to use something like that in the evening and then get a moisturizer with a sunscreen in it during the day. If you don't have a moisturizer with a sunscreen in it, then at least get your sunscreen through your makeup because you absolutely need to have a sunscreen on every single day. We have UVA and UVB rays. You, know, you can be walking around on a cloudy day and still get the UVA rays. Those are our aging rays. They go way down into the layers of the skin. They find your collagen, your elastin, like I said before, your collagen's like a nice thick juicy mattress, while UVA rays is like letting a busload of kids into a hotel room to jump on the mattresses. Um, we have a lot of antioxidant stress that happens when you're exposed to UVA rays. So sunscreen is a must. In fact, either with yourself or with someone you know, I 
in particular know someone who is a sun worshiper and um, her skin is incredibly more aged than mine is and she's quite a few years younger than me and it is because of that excessive exposure to UVA and UVB rays. Now your UVB rays are for burning um, and those really only go down to your, your lower layers of your epidermis where you create melanocytes, um, which you know, when you start to burn the skin, they all kind of come to the surface to protect you, which is why you turn a darker color. If you continue to burn and you continue to stimulate those as you get older, then you become spotted darker. You start to see the damage from having all of that sun. Um, but the UVA rays are the sneaky ones that you don't necessarily see. You can get them on a cloudy day. So you absolutely have to have a sunscreen on, whether it's in your makeup or your daytime moisturizer. So some advanced things that you can do at home for your skincare to prolong your facials. This is something that not a lot of estheticians talk about, not a lot of people push, and yet it's so very important. So let's talk about an exfoliation. Exfoliators should happen between two to three times a week it is essential. And what are you doing when you are exfoliating is you are turning over your skin cells. So if you're someone who your skin cells have decided uh, through age and through maybe environmental stress and uh, everything else we talked about, to turn over skin cells slower, then you absolutely need to be exfoliating at least two times a week or three times a week. Daily, no, not so much. Sometimes there are cleansers that are um, that have a little buffer in them. And those are really nice. However, to use them on a daily basis, to me as an esthetician, I've only ever seen damage being done by doing that. Exfoliation should happen uh, every other day if you really want something um, aggressive, but not every day. The other thing that is very common is that you know, people go to Dillard's or they go to Saks and they get a Clarisonic exfoliating brush. These are wonderful. They are not, however, wonderful twice a day, every day, with a cleanser that has exfoliating beads. And the more I've, I do skin, the more I see people who come in who think they have rosacea, they think they have sensitive skin, or their skin is excessively dry and they don't know why, and when I ask them what they're doing, remember their cleanser is what's going to create how their skin behaves. They are cleansing their skin day and night with a Clarisonic brush or something like it and an exfoliating cleanser with it because the person at Dillard's told them they should do that. So can you get damage? Can you give yourself rosacea? Can you give yourself issues with your skin by what you're cleansing it with? Absolutely. Now, the two different types of exfoliants there are out there because you would really need to know this if you're going to be doing exfoliation. The first one is a, it could be called a physical exfoliation, it could be called a manual or a mechanical exfoliation, it's all the same thing. And basically what it means is you are manually or physically creating the exfoliating process. So something like um, our oak cleansing facial polish is a physical or manual exfoliant meaning that you it has little beads in it and that you are manually exfoliating a clarisonic brush is a manual exfoliation a, let's say a um microdermabrasion a dermaplaning those are manual exfoliations we are manually physically doing them okay then there are chemical exfoliations so there's enzymes which are really great to put on the skin introduce a little heat to it and then chemically it starts to digest or eat away at the skin, the dead skin cells. Also under chemical exfoliations are like chemical peels. So if you go to a dermatologist or a medical spa or even come into the vineyards and get a chemical peel, um, it's a chemical reaction that's happening on your skin that eats away the layers of the skin. Um, sometimes depending on the severity or the depth of the chemical peel, you might feel or you might experience a little disqualification or a cellular turnover. You might physically see it on the surface of your skin, but they are refining peels more and more this, you know, in today's day and age, that you don't necessarily have to see that peeling process in order to get the really nice results. So we have some at-home products that you can do that are basically um, little mini chemical peels and um, it helps prolong the effects of the facial. You would do it probably with a chemical exfoliant as deep as our peels go, maybe once to twice 
a week is just fine. So there's a sweet cherry brightening enzyme peel, and that is great for everybody, especially if you're a little hyperpigmented. And then we have the pumpkin enzyme peel, which is really nice for those thick, oilier skins or people who might be affected by breakouts. And then you have the pear and fig enzyme peel, which kind of combines a chemical and a physical. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, all of our enzymes are fantastic, and I would recommend you cleanse your skin, you put the enzyme on, and then you jump in the shower um, and let it steam into your skin for a little bit. So maybe while you're washing your body or you are deep conditioning your hair, you put the little enzyme on and let that hot water or the hot steam from the shower kind of steam up the enzymes. Enzymes are like little Pac-Men. You put them on the skin. When you introduce heat, it wakes them up, creates a, a deep hunger in them, and they start running around and eating up all the dead skin, just like Pac-Man does. So those are going to be some really nice at-home, advanced skincare options for you to prolong the effects of your facial. Another thing a lot of people skip, and this is something that is really important, is an eye cream, day and night. We tend to skip it because by the time we're ready for bed, we just want to wash our face. It's a stretch to even put a moisturizer on because we just want to go to bed. And so putting on an eye cream is like, ugh. But let me tell you, your skin around your eyes is the most delicate skin. It is thinner around your eyes. Now your epidermis, okay, your top layer of your skin is already only as thick as a piece of paper. So now we get down to the eye area, which is even thinner than that. So that's why we tend to see a little more fluid retention. We can see exhaustion. We can see the dark circles because that skin is so, so, so thin. Also, the eyes are a really good indication of age because sometimes we do tend to moisturize our face really well and sunblock our face really well, but then we don't actually do it around the eyes. So you tend to see um, all of those expression lines showing up a little earlier than the rest of the lines and wrinkles um, because of that thin, delicate skin. So we have quite a few, we have actually three eye creams from Naturopathica that are beautiful, two of which are our best sellers. So we have the Argon and Peptide Wrinkle Repair Eye Cream, which is a nice replenishing cream, and that goes on day and night. It has certain peptides in it to kind of mimic your skin's healthy cells and it helps to plump up the wrinkles. It also is really hydrating because of that nice cream base. And we have the vitamin K brightening eye serum. So serum has a smaller molecule. It's going to penetrate faster. It's not going to sit on top of the skin and give you that lipid barrier like a cream does, but a serum is going to be really nice, this vitamin K especially, for creating microcirculation and for also um, getting rid of those dark circles. Vitamin K is really good for bruising, for fluid retention. Um, this is a really nice under eye cream for those things. Some other advanced skincare things you can be doing at home is using a retinol at night. Now we have um, retinols for sale either in a concentrated formula that you use on and off or we have a night cream that you can use every night. Um, retinol products are really, and Retin-A is really one of the only proven ingredients that help repair the signs of aging. Um, so with a retinol, you do become a little more photosensitive. You have to absolutely make sure that you're using a sunscreen. When you put it on, it should only be put on at night and it's going to basically micro exfoliate the skin so that your cellular turnover is happening faster and better than ever before. When you do that, now we know that creating that cellular turnover is going to create healthier cells. It's going to help stimulate your collagen and elastin and help plump up that beautiful mattress. So using retinol, very important when you become more mature, and even if you aren't in the mature state yet, if you're dry, if you're oily, using a retinol is really, really nice to help prevent the signs of aging and kind of prolong that a little bit. Face masks are wonderful, and they are probably are in every spa's um, slowest seller. And that's because people don't really feel like they have the time to do it or they don't really know why they should mask. There's so many different types of masks out there and basically think of a mask as a concentrated active treatment. So if you've just done, say, a chemical peel, 
or a chemical exfoliation, so maybe our bright cherry enzyme peel, and you've worn it in the shower for about five minutes, your skin is beautifully exfoliated, so it's eaten off all the top layers of the dead skin. Now, if you put a mask on the skin, you've eliminated about you know, a week's worth of dead skin that was kind of hanging out on top of your face. Now you put a mask on, now that mask is absorbing into the layers of the skin deeper. It's affecting the layers that matter, that are creating cells, and it is giving your skin all of that beautiful hydration into the areas it needs to be in. So a mask is like a targeted treatment. Um, you can use it for hydration if you have dry skin. You can use it for brightening. If you notice that you know your skin's kind of dull and lackluster, if you've been out in the sun a bit, you can use it to control oil or you can mix it up. You really can do a, a bunch of things with masks. And essentially when you come in for a facial, you come in for a deep cleanse, you come in for an exfoliation, uh, of course the beautiful relaxing massage, but then you come in for a mask. So doing an exfoliation and a mask at home is doing a mini facial at home. It's doing, if you're using professional grade products, it's doing what a professional is doing on the surface level. Um, we're not able to, you know, obviously we're not doing the massage or doing the extractions or the steam or anything like that, but this is a little mini facial at home. You can do it easily enough and this can help prolong the effects of a professional facial. Some other things that you might wanna venture into advanced treatments for home care is a vitamin C serum. Vitamin C should be put on during the day. It's one of our strongest and most um, usable, flexible antioxidant on, on the shelves. It's very hard to find a good, stable vitamin C. So if you're buying one off of Amazon or you find one in the Whole Foods or wherever, it's not a stable vitamin C. You have to find a stable vitamin C. It means that you have to spend a little more money on it, but it's gonna stay, it's gonna do what it needs to do, and your vitamin C should be put on during the day underneath your moisturizer. Your retinol is at night to help turn over those skin cells, and your vitamin C goes on in the morning to help supercharge your skin, help protect it against antioxidant damage, free radical damage. Um, it helps fight aging, and it helps to boost the immune system of the skin. So we have the vitamin C15 wrinkle repair serum. We have the botanical brightening serum, which has vitamin C in it. And then we have the vitamin C revitalizing lotion as a moisturizer too. So vitamin C in the daytime, retinol or retin-A at night, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Don't forget your sunscreen. Facial oils are really up and coming as well. And these are, they're creating them for anyone from dry, mature sensitive skin to even oily and acne prone skin, which it seems, it seems you know, counteractive, but they actually refine these oils enough to help put them on the skin and will you know, continue to create a nice environment for, for your skin to do well with. So facial oils are like little multivitamins for your skin. And you know, when you're putting on stuff, if you're layering your skin, you're always going to go from the thinnest to the thickest. So you put on, you know, in the morning a vitamin C serum. Serums are super small molecules. They penetrate way deeper. They're going to absorb into your skin faster than you can put it on. Then you put on a couple drops of a facial oil, which is a nice thick layer that's going to help protect your skin full of vitamins. Um, and then you put your moisturizer with your sunscreen on, on top of that. Some other things that you can do are concentrates. Now, Naturopathica has quite a few concentrates um, that are targeted. You use them for seven days. So after a facial, doing something like our marine rejuvenating concentrate or our retinol renewal concentrate is really nice to help boost your skin after that facial. Um, but then there's also corrective serums that we have that might target something specific. So if you have, um, you know, hyperpigmentation. You might want to use a botanical brightening serum. If you have acne, you might want to use our rosehip serum. If you have uh, excessive aging, you might want to use the plant stem cell uh, booster serum. These little booster serums help target specific treatments so that you can layer them again, vitamin C first, and then maybe your plant cell booster serum for anti-aging, then your oil, then your moisturizer. So you can put as much into your at-home care and get it as advanced as you want it to be. Um, it just depends how much effort you want to put into it. I can honestly say that I cleanse my skin every night. I put on a serum and a moisturizer. 
I alternate my serum. So sometimes I do a retinol, sometimes I do, you know, a, a brightening serum. Then in the morning, I rinse my face off. I don't use a cleanser again because I tend to get pretty oily. Um, and then I will put on an oil control serum and a moisturizer. And that moisturizer is a sunscreen. So you can do all kinds of things. You know, it's, as you probably already know, you've probably got a million products under your counter. It's very intimidating when it comes to picking out products for you to do at home. Um, but that's what we're here for. You can come in and see Cheryl, you come in and see me or Jane, and we'll help you decide what's gonna be best for your skin type and also best for your lifestyle. You know, we don't wanna send you home with 18 products if you're not gonna use them, it defeats the purpose. So we're gonna help get you set up with things that you're going to want to do, that you're gonna see really great results with and that you're gonna um, enjoy over and over again. So now we get to advanced facial therapies. There's all kinds of advanced things out there and this too becomes really overwhelming because so many places have so many different things to do. And so let's talk about some of them and how they differ. And hopefully this will shed some light. Now, as I mentioned before, the vineyards were looking at getting advanced modalities in the wellness center. Um, it's a little bit of a process because we want to make sure we get the right ones and we want to make sure it's stuff that our members are going to enjoy and, and take advantage of. So we really want to get it right. Um, so let's talk about some of those. The first thing is EpiWave. EpiWave we are already doing at the wellness center. Cheryl does it a ton. So does Jane. Um, it's an electrical current facial device. It uses a microcurrent that delivers very low levels of electricity to the face and neck. Um, it helps contour the face by stimulating and tightening your facial muscles, which are very thin. Um, and then it is wonderful for cleaning out the pores. So it's like doing a little um, pressure washing for the pores, and then it's stimulating the muscles on top of that. There is also a um, mode on it as well that helps to draw the products deeper into the skin. So if you haven't had an empty wave yet, definitely book yourself one. Cheryl does beautiful facials with the EpiWave and you'll just notice the difference in your skin immediately. The other thing that we do at the Wellness Center is we use chemical peels. Now when you think of chemical peels, it doesn't mean that you have to shed like a snake for a week to get really great results. Right now we use a 15% chemical peel. We are upping that to 30% when we go to hydropeptide, which is basically a medical strength peel. So what chemical peels do, it falls into that chemical exfoliation process. They chemically eat away the layers of the skin by using either alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. Alpha hydroxy acids are in the scope of say glycolic acid, you've probably heard of that, mandelic acid, malic acid, azelic acid, citric acid, lactic acid. Chemical peels are often a blend of these beautiful acids that once you put them onto the skin, they start to eat away at the surface of the skin. Your skin pH is usually around a 4.5 to 5.5. Chemical peel might be around a 3 or a 2.5, which means that it's more acidic than your skin. You think about your stomach acid, right? We have a really low pH in our stomach because that acid has to digest whole foods, whether it's fruits, vegetables, or a slab of meat. It has to be able to break it down and digest it. Well, when it comes to your skin, uh, your skin is the protein, it is the meat, and we have to put on basically a, a form of an acid, it's like a stomach acid to digest to a certain degree um, all of that dead meat. So <laughs> that is a really gross comparison, that is just always how I've explained it. Um, but we do that by way of these really beautifully concocted um, chemical peels. This is not something you should do at home unless it's a specific at-home peel because you can um, really damage the skin if you don't know what you're doing. So chemical peels are something that we're just kind of brushing the surface of and we're going to start offering more at the Wellness Center. Give you, they give you a wonderful result. You don't necessarily have to peel or flake from them. You can go on with your day-to-day -day life. You just really have to be sure that after you get a chemical peel, you are not going in the sun for at least 72 hours. You're not going in the pool. You're not going out to the beach. Um, you want to absolutely baby your skin for about three days after to make sure that you are um, not causing any further damage. Dermaplaning is something that we do at the Wellness Center. It's probably one of my favorite things. This is where we use a surgical grade scalpel. We free the skin of any oils 
and then it holding it but on a certain angle we can actually scrape it over the surface of the skin to remove dead skin cells and what also ends up happening is it takes off all of that you know troublesome peach fuzz that all your makeup gets stuck in leaves the skin super soft glowing i mean when you put your makeup on after a derma playing you are just in shock of how beautiful the makeup goes on how smooth it goes on it is like silk this is also wonderful to use in conjunction with an enzyme peel or a lighter chemical peel um, after you do dermaplaning to put a, a mask on afterwards is amazing you see such a beautiful result so dermaplaning we offer at the wellness center cheryl and jane both do a beautiful job of this and you can add it to any facial to get a really nice result and to kind of emphasize what you're already trying to get done with your facial LED lights, um, like basically color light therapy is huge right now, and it can do anything from address, you know, breakouts to inflammation and sensitivity to even helping produce oil in the skin. So you'll see there's different color lights out there. A red light um, is what we use to synthesize collagen, elastin, help break up um you know your melanocytes if you've had a lot of exposure to the sun and it also helps to stimulate sebaceous activity so the red light is very stimulating if you see a blue or a purple light those tend to be very anti-inflammatory they tend to kill bacteria um, so led lights is they're really wonderful um, they are all over the place there's even at-home lights that you can purchase they don't go down as deep as professional lights but it is something nice you could do at home they're non-invasive there's really unless you are overusing them to death there's really no harmful side effects and there's no downtime some other things that are out there hydrofacials you might see these in other um, facilities this is a machine that um, puts it does a couple different things where it has a mode that helps take away dead skin cells and basically bathe the skin and then it does some extractions and then it can add a chemical peel it can also add serums in a pressurized way hydrofacials are really nice facials they tend to be up there in the price but you'll see them out there a lot um, and offered by different spas really wonderful way to experience a facial you don't really typically if you like the human touch you might not like a hydrofacial because it's done all by machine, but it is a really nice way to get a nice facial. Microdermabrasion is something that we've been looking into at the Wellness Center. Um, wonderful way to mechanically slash manually, physically exfoliate the skin. And what we do in a microdermabrasion is actually shown in this picture here on the upper, the top part. Um, there's a little diamond tip on that machine. The machine has a sucking mechanism. And so as we glide it over the skin, the diamond tip kind of peels up all the layers of your stratum corneum, which is um, basically all your dead skin. And then the mechanism in there that does the suction sucks it all up into a filter. And then we can literally pull the filter off and show you all the dead skin that we've pulled off your, your face. It is fantastic. It is a wonderful treatment for getting rid of dead skin cells stimulating collagen and elastin it helps with the appearance of sun damage wrinkles fine lines age spots acne scarring melasma all kinds of wonderful things it's basically the same level of an, a chemical peel but it's doing it in a different way so remember chemical peels are chemical exfoliations microdermabrasion is your manual exfoliation same level same results different modality so that kind of wraps up our advanced treatments, um, the advanced things you could be doing at home to prolong the effects of a, treat, of a facial treatment. Um, if you have any questions about the facials we offer, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there's anything specific that you wanna see the Wellness Center do, please write us either at info at vineyardswellnessnaples.com or um, send a little comment on this YouTube video. We'd be happy to respond. We are in the process of expanding our facial department and doing more services just for you. So do let us know what you'd like to see. This way we can make sure to maintain your business. Um, everyone, thank you so much for your time. Again, my name is Laura. I'm the director of the Wellness Center, licensed esthetician. And um, I surely hope that you've enjoyed this and it was educational. We'll be having more skincare lectures as we get open again and we get going. If you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out. 
uh, stay safe out there and know that we're thinking about you guys and we'll see you soon.